Hi, this is Leslie Langnau with Design World Magazine, and I'm here at the Rapid Show with John Murray, CEO and President of Concept Laser. So John, you've been in this industry a long time, and one of the things I'm seeing a lot of here at this show is such an emphasis on trying to put these systems and machines on the factory floor. Where do you think we stand at this, and how likely is that going to happen? It's a great question because there's a, a great diversity in where people are with this. There are some people who are just now entering that, giving that thought. One of our largest companies, companies and one of our customers has been in production of FDA approved components for six years. And I always say that means they started 10 years ago to get to this state, right? Yeah. And then I meet with their competitors who say, you know, we're not sure this is prime time, we're not sure. And I want to say, do you realize you are already a decade behind? Oh That's a bit of a gap to, to bridge. But I've had head of the customers that bought systems and I asked the, their leadership, you know, what's your ROI? What are you going to do with this system? He said, we don't have an ROI and we don't know what we're going to do with it. We just know we have to get into this or we're going to be playing catch up. So it's, people are really waking up. I think the whole engineering and manufacturing community is realizing this isn't just for prototypes, it's not for toys and widgets, this is real production. So you actually see these systems coming out on the factory floor in the near term that will be used to produce thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of parts? Could be, it depends on the size of the component. We just printed three six cylinder engine blocks in Germany several months ago and, and that kind of makes people stop and think, wow, if you're printing engine blocks, you're getting into some big components, right? And then you get on the other extreme with dental and they're in heavy production. We have some fabulous customers that are doing work in the dental field on, on a very small scale. Now, and so it spans that, that whole spectrum of size and, and throughput. So what specifically is Concept Laser doing in regards to going onto the factory floor? The biggest step we're taking is the M-Line platform. In this particular case right here, you see a part that could be built on the M-Line. It's uh, 400 millimeters by 400 millimeters and has up to four 1,000 watt lasers. So this machine is built for complete um, autonomous activity. So you're not going to have humans going out and starting the machines. And it's one of the, one of the short, uh, shortcomings we see of the existing architectures, right? A human has to go up and prepare the build, load the build, get the machine ready to run and hit go. Then you wait, you get it to be done, and then a human has to address the machine again to remove the part. So we're going, we're going to eliminate all that. We're going to do that with autonomous vehicles on this M-Line factory of tomorrow and really get it automated where you can put literally hundreds of machines together. And that's going to be driven heavily by GE's work. Like on the advanced turboprop, they've reduced 855 parts down to 12. I mean, that's just, from an engineering standpoint, you have to try to get your head around that a little bit. Now, is this going to include the post-processing steps as well? It will. It'll have post-processing. That could be heat treat, CMM, inspection, whatever might be there. And every configuration will be unique to, to customize for each customer. So can you talk a little bit about this arrangement with GE? How is that going? And, and what do you think is going to come out of that? Well, the GE uh, acquisition brings a big smile to my face. <laughs> Uh, the resources that GE has put into additive already, you know, three billion dollars when you look at what they've done with the Leap fuel nozzle, uh, the acquisition of Concept Laser and then RCAM, no one has put these kind of resources into this. This is the most exciting field. It's touching every aspect of our lives. You know, if you get dental work done, it's going to be printed. If you're going to get a new knee, it's going to be printed. So it's going to touch everything. Our automobiles, you know, and even with Elon Musk going to Mars, right? He's going to get there via 3D printing. And I've always joked, I said, you know, our grandchildren may come up and say, I'm going to go on study abroad, but it's not to France, it's not to England, I'm going to go to Mars, right? So it's going to be a different world, and a lot of that is made uh, possible by 3D printing. And to bring it down to earth a little bit, you've got some parts here, some of them from a, an old-fashioned or a, an older uh, yes, kind of is car? A, a World War II fighter, the, the P-51D Mustang, an iconic aircraft, there are only about 150 of them left flying today. And a good friend of mine, uh, Rob Connolly, he's a pilot and an avid aviation enthusiast. And we were having dinner one time and he said, you know, what could we do with additive? Instead of going forward and looking what Airbus is doing in 2050 and, you know, where we're going to go, let's reach back 70 years and see what's going on with additive. So we looked at these exhaust stacks. This is the original from the 1940s. It consists of four pieces. There's a base, then these two formed uh, shells and then a ring at the top and there are 34 inches of weld seam on this component. It's a lot. So with PADT in Arizona they went and did a blue light scan 
and then we printed it on the M2, we printed two at a time, and then installed it on Rob's P51 and ran them. And we ran them in stainless steel, which is the original alloy called out in the original 1940s drawings. So it was great to go back, right, reach back into history, and again, it's touching every aspect of our lives. Did you consider a different metal or a stainless steel adequate to the job? Well, that's a good question. We, we thought about uh, Inconel for <laughs> high temperature application, right? But then we thought, okay, let's, let's stay true to form okay. and we'll, uh, we'll stay with stainless. And since that event, we've had other people with uh, interest to restore these very exotic and very rare aircraft. And the, the intent was, well, now we'll scan one and we'll leave the weld seam on there. And we'll still print it as one part, but it'll look looked like it was built in the 1940s, right? So we can, we can play uh, with the technology a little bit and make it look like it was built in 1940, but be state of the art today. So that's kind of a, a fun option we've considered. So if engineers wanted to find out more information about what Concept Laser is doing, where would they go to? Our website is www.conceptlaserinc.com. Thank you so much, John. I appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thank you, Leslie. Always nice to see you. Thank you. And that's what's going on with Concept Laser here at the Rapid Show.